everyone and let's check out another exciting chess game by Paul Morphy. And Paul Morphy is not surrendering anything before the chess game. That's an equal chess game against his opponent, George Hammond. And this game was played in Boston in 1859. So Paul Morphy starts the game with playing e4, e5 by Hammond, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. The Spanish opening, a6, defending the bishop, b5, bishop to b3. And even today, modern chess players are playing the same opening, usually. So these moves were the most played moves in the history of chess. Bishop to b3, bishop to c5, c3 by Morphy. Morphy wants to play d4, d6, and d4 by Morphy. And believe it or not, but black is already in trouble. Well, in 1859, at that time, in the 19th century, Paul Morphy was playing like a modern chess grandmaster. That's the most impressive thing about Paul Morphy. Paul Morphy's understanding of the game is very impressive. Without any serious study, what a talent. And why it is much better, again, why? We have bishop to b6. If e takes on d4, then c takes on d4, and white has the strong center, and black is worst in this position, bishop to b6, white is better. Well, that's the purpose of chess. Controlling the center is one of the purposes of chess. Let's take it back. After d4, we have bishop to b6, and d takes on e5. And this is also losing for black. We have queen to e7. Why not capturing back the pawn? Let's take it back. If d takes on e5, what happens then? Then queen takes on d8. Let's say knight takes on d8. Then knight takes on e5. And white is better. White is a pawn up. Black is losing. After queen takes on d8, let's say king takes on d8. Then bishop takes on f7, and again, white is a pawn up, in a winning position. Black is losing the casting rights. What a terrible scenario for black. At the beginning of the game, let's take it back. In the real game, after d takes on e5, we have queen to e7, and bishop to d5, by Morphy, attacking the knight, and if moving the knight, then bishop takes rook. What else? Bishop to b7, bishop to g5, defending the queen. e takes on f6, and knight takes on f6, and Morphy castled. Morphy is playing flawless, without any mistakes or any inaccuracy. That's very impressive in 1859. After castling in the king's side, we have queen to d7. So black is thinking that he can capture the bishop, this annoying bishop. But Morphy captured the knight. Bishop takes on f6. G takes on f6. Knight to d4. Bishop takes knight. Morphy didn't capture the bishop. And he played queen to h5. That's check. King to d8. And then he captured the bishop. And if knight takes pawn, then bishop takes bishop. In this position, for avoiding bishop takes bishop, George Hammond played king to c8. And now, he is threatening to take the pawn. Morphy played rook to c1, and knight takes on d4. Bishop takes on b7, but this time king takes on b7. What would you do in this position? Paul Morphy played queen to d5, that's check. Also attacking the knight. Defending the knight and blocking the king. What else? For not losing the piece. Morphy played a4. He is doing the best thing in this position. Well, the king's safety is compromised, so Paul Morphy wants to open the file. King to b6, unpinning the knight. But then a5 by Morphy, the best move by far. Sacrificing the pawn. But we have king to b7 by George Hammond. If capturing the pawn with the knight, then queen to d4, this is check. Where is the king going? Black has to move the king. Let's say king to b7, 
Then Hook takes on A5. And this is losing again for Black. Losing the knight. And before forgetting, Paul Morphy actually sees everything after Queen to D4. What happens if C5? Blocking and attacking the Queen. Then Rook takes on C5. And if Pawn takes Rook, then Queen takes Queen. So let's say Knight to B3. Forking everything. How to defend? Well, of course, Paul Morphy considered this possibility. Then Rook takes on B5. That's check. That's a double check. So Black has to capture the Rook. King takes on B5. And Queen to A4. This is winning the Queen. King to B6 and Queen takes on D7. Knight takes Rook. And Queen takes on D6. And White is much better. White is winning. So this is why Morphy played A5. King to B7. And Rook to A3 by Paul Morphy. A Rook lift move. But after this move, George Hammond resigned. Because there is no defense and Black is losing the game. How to defend? Rook to c3, attacking the knight. There is no defense. Well, Black is losing the piece sooner or later. And let me show you the possible continuation. h5, Rook from a to c3, how to defend the knight. King to b8 and Rook takes on c6. It is over for Hammond. After rook to a3, let's say rook from a to e8, f4, king to c8, and then rook takes knight. Well, that's some kind of a zugzwang position for black. Let's say b4, not king to c8, attacking the rook, but then rook to b3, and again, there is no defense, attacking from everywhere. Black can't move the queen, black can't move the king. So let's say rook from h to f8, then rook takes pawn, moving the king, and rook takes knight. It is over again for black. Whatever black does, black is losing the piece. And as you can see, Paul Morphy looks invincible compared to his contemporaries. He was very talented and strongest player in that era. Especially in the United States, Paul Morphy was invincible. And so was in Europe, Paul Morphy defeated every strong opponent, every formidable player in the Europe. He was the unofficial world chess champion. That's why he was crushing his opponents very easily. So this is why after Morphy played Rook to A3, George Hammond resigned. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.